Everybody was to ask me, Graven, how do you feel about what the Ravens have done so far in free agency? My response to them would be, I think we ain't done yet. But then if they said, well, no, 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 that's not good enough. We need more detail. We need more words. We need more verbiage. Well, how do you feel exactly about what the Ravens have done so far in this offseason? And I would tell them, I think we ain't done yet. Shout out to not only Marcus Peters, but shout out to Eric DaCosta as well, because that's pretty much what he said in the press conference that was held today for one Marcus Williams and Morgan Moses. Eric DaCosta let it be known that we ain't done yet. Well, he said that we're disappointed about how this past season went and we see a real opportunity to move forward. And he talked about how they still have some money to spend and they won't stand pat. They won't stand pat, and he said that they'll likely make some moves over the next couple of days. So, we're going to see exactly what those moves are. If I had to guess off the top of my head, um, I would say one of those moves is going to be for a center. It's been a lot of debate. Should they bring back Bradley Bozeman? Should they get uh, J.C. Treader? Which one should they do? Who will it be? Well, we'll see soon enough. But I think if you can get your center position solidified, before the draft, obviously, if you can get everything solidified before the draft, that'd be great. But it just doesn't always work like that. But I, I, I love it. I appreciated it. And I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it all day. Um, Eric DaCosta has shown that I think maybe they have been listening. Because, because Eric DaCosta, again, they've been stepping way out of their box. And maybe Eric DaCosta is realizing, man, the cap is cap. All of it is. Uh, and, and if you really want somebody, we've been saying this for the longest. For the longest. This is nothing new. If you really want somebody, then you can go get them. It's just a matter of how bad you want them. But anyway, Eric DaCosta, usually when I listen to a press conference with him speaking, I listen for key words, key phrases. I listen to way, the, the way that he looks when he says certain things. Uh, I listen to the, uh, the words and, and, and his tone when he says certain things. Because a lot of times when Eric DaCosta says one thing, he means another. I take you back a couple of months in the season-ending press conference. Eric DaCosta talked about how, man, basically he said the Ravens are broke. He said we ain't got no money. He said we're not mortgaging the future. He talked about how basically the, their salary cap was very, very height and guess what happened the ravens they not only signed marcus williams to that what five year 70 million dollar deal they signed morgan moses to the three year 15 million dollar deal and then they also signed one zadarius smith who still has to pass his physical to make it official so we're still waiting and holding out hope for that but they also signed him uh to his deal and and then he was asked today in the press conference like oh well where, where's zadarius smith and he said that, well, this press conference is to really introduce uh, these guys. This is for these guys. So I don't know, man. I, I'm not trying to overlook into it or overanalyze it, but that did uh, worry me a little bit. Because he didn't say, oh, yeah, Darius Smith is for sure on the way. He didn't say that. But, and he did also talk about how they could have some announcements over the next couple of days, some more announcements on different things being done. Um, so we'll see. But. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens with Z. Hopefully all that clears up. Hopefully his back is good to go and there are no setbacks. Because uh, that, uh, I talked about it before, back injuries and neck injuries, they are the scariest. Because those things can linger. They can pop up at any time if they're not all the way healed. And hmm, I don't know. So we'll see. So hopefully everything is good with Zadarius Smith. But anyway, um, whenever I watch Eric DaCosta, he, he'll say one thing, but then I really think, oh, no, he, he means the opposite. Because, again, he said they were broke, said we ain't got no money. He went out, spent all this money. Then, of course, last year, remember the, the biggest thing. Well, I mean, I'm insulted how y'all feel about RSC. But boom, what did he do? He signed Sammy Watkins, and he drafted Rashad Bateman, and he drafted Tylen Wallace. So a, a lot of when he gets up there, he's saying one thing, but it could mean something completely opposite. But in this case, where he said that, they're not going to stand pat and they probably going to make some more moves because they got some more money to spend. It's like, oh, well, I, I actually do believe that because you've shown literally in the past, what, 48 hours that you do have some money to spend and you're actually being willing to spend it. So I would think of either Bradley Bozeman, J.C. Treader. I, I'm, I know Pat Ricard is just going to be back. I'm like, 
it, it's like I'm like one thousand percent sure that he's gonna be back. Um, and we'll we'll see what happens with it. But anyway, Marcus Williams. He spoke today uh, to the media for the first time as a Baltimore Raven. And the biggest thing that I took from his part of the press conference was that he is not here to be compared to anybody. They asked him, oh, who does he like? Who does he model his game after? Who do you play like? What's your play style like? Who, who, which player do you try to be like? He said, no, 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 no. He said, I'm trying to be me. Me. I'm not trying to play like nobody. I ain't trying to be like nobody. He said, me. That's it. And I loved it. He, you can tell he loves his family. He, he loves, he said his family, they don't ask him for nothing. But they are super supportive of everything that he does. And again, you need a support system. This is obviously not just about football, but just in life, period. You need a support system. Because you, you don't have a support system. It's going to be really, really harder for you to be successful in whatever it is that you're trying to do. But if you have a support system, that support system can tell you when you're doing great. They can tell you, hey, great job. That support system could, could and should always tell you when you're doing a bad job at something, too. Ways that you can improve on stuff, too. So, and then they can tell you everything in the middle, too. So, shout out to him. I, I, I just, that was my favorite part of his presser. Uh, and then the Ravens, they did another presser for Morgan Moses. I thought both pressers were going to be together. Maybe Ravens thought both pressers were going to be together. But I don't know what happened. Doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Anyway, Morgan Moses. Uh, he spoke about, man, you feel for him. And uh, it was my guy, Kevin. He was in the comments section and he said, man, you could just tell that Morgan Moses, he's excited just to be playing for a good team. Because again, last year he was with the Jets and before then he was with the Washington Commanders. Um, so he, he just doesn't know what it's like to really play with a good team. So this is different for him. This is a different atmosphere. He said he was used to driving on the highway, seeing M&T Bank Stadium lit up at night, lit up purple. Uh, so he's <laughs> he's very familiar with the area, um, obviously, for, especially for being with the Washington for a long time. Um, but when he, he spoke and, and a lot of people in the comments section were saying, oh, man, this dude, could, he could get a TV analyst job once he decides to retire. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he certainly could. Um, because the way that he spoke, he spoke so confident. He, he spoke with this this calm confidence. And I think that could be because of his experience. He is an older player. I think he's like 31. But he's had experience in some situations that were very, very crazy. And it was always uh, surrounded by a lot of drama, especially with Washington. Um, so for him to be in a situation like the Ravens, like, right, I mean, their biggest drama right now is the whole Lamar Jackson contract. But, right, and they've, they've certainly had their drama over the years now. You know, but right now, everything seems to be uh, pretty calm. Um, he talked about the possibility of blocking for Lamar Jackson. Um, now, he did say, because I think with him, and this has happened to me before, too. When you're, you're working somewhere, you're at a job, and the job could be straight, but it's just a lot of, it could be a lot of drama with the job. It could be a lot of turnover with the job, and you're just not used to consistency at the job so you've been working there you still been doing your thing or whatever but it's been like uh i don't know if this is the best situation for me but this is what my situation is so i'm gonna make the most of it so you do that but then when you go to another situation a different situation where it's actually calmness and there's consistency in the workplace it's like whew, this is a breath of fresh air and that's exactly what it sounded like with Morgan Moses because he talked about throughout his career that he averaged like going through five quarterbacks a season. So somebody having to do that, like that's crazy. That's a lot, man. Going through multiple quarterbacks every year because multiple every QB does not play the same as we all know. Uh, quarterbacks have their different styles. They have their different tendencies. They have all sorts of different things that they do. So you as an offensive lineman, you could be spending all this time studying your quarterback. Okay, this is what he likes to do in this situation. Oh, when this happens, this is what he likes to do. All right, let me be prepared for that. Then if that quarterback goes out for whatever reason, they either get benched, they get hurt, whatever happens, it's like, oh, you, you got to change everything up. But see that from Morgan Moses, speaking about change, oh, I loved it. This was my favorite part from his press conference and maybe my favorite part from listening to everybody that spoke today. Morgan Moses, he talked about, he brought up the AFC West. 
He talked about everything that they got going on over there. And he just brought up the league in general. And he said, this is why you it's important to be balanced on offense. So talking about doing both, he said, you got to be able to pass. And he said, you, you have to be able to adapt. And I was like, oh, I said, tell him, Morgan. Tell him. Tell him. Because they need to hear it. And Ravens, again, remember last year, they, they were trending to being more adaptable, to adapting. But we know a lot of people were hurt. And, and again, my, my biggest thing going into this year, I'm hoping that the Ravens didn't only adapt because everybody was hurt. I'm hoping they continue this adapting. All while improving in the running game, too, and obviously improving the offensive line, improving in the passing game. Everybody just getting better. That's the hope for this season. Uh, we'll see see how it goes. But this is a start. Um, he also talked about, well, ooh, did y'all see what Eric DaCosta, well, his son, his, Morgan Moses' son came up there. That's a big three-year-old right there. But Morgan Moses, he ain't small himself, so I can understand why. Um, but Morgan Moses' son, he was messing with, like, Eric DaCosta's phone or something. And Eric was like, oh, you can't touch that dog. So I said, Eric, had he had to go into uncle mode real quick. And then Morgan Moses, he, he gave, his son kept hitting the mic and stuff. He was like, doo, 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 hoo. he was making noises and stuff. And Morgan Moses gave him that laugh like, ha, ha. But anybody that has kids or anybody who, is, uh, who has their father in their life, you know that dad laugh where they, they, they look like they're laughing, but you know they're not really laughing. And it was, it's that laugh like, ha, ha, oh, you better stop because you're about to get it. That's exactly what Morgan Moses did to his son. And then I like, I start looking down at the comment section during a live stream. And then I look back up and boom, his son was gone. So they took care of that quick. And it, it was no surprise once you heard that laugh. Um, I liked how he talked about too that uh, he said he wants to train with the rookies. He wants to learn with the rookies and stuff uh, because he said you are never he said, even though he's been around for like nine years, he said, you are never, you never know anything, everything, I mean, excuse me. You never know everything. You are never too good to learn something new. And that's true. And that goes for everybody, no matter what you do. You are never too good to learn something new and you will never know everything. So don't act like you do. Um, so I, I really appreciated that part, man. But yeah, he just sounds ready, man. He just sounds ready, ready to come in, play. Ready to be in a, in a team, in an organization, in a franchise that is consistent. Um, because if you, you're so used to dealing with chaos, 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 when you have consistency, it can sort of take you off guard. It can catch you off guard. Um, but one more thing um, that I really like from his part of the press conference, he talked about how, because uh, they asked him, like, how do you stay in such good shape? How do you do that? And he just talks about pre preparation, about eating, exercising. He said he does yoga, this and that. But he said a, a huge part of that, he said his in-home, his personal care person is his wife. That was a nice little sweet moment. But so I was thinking like, man, can, can the Ravens hire her so that all the other Ravens, can they can take care of themselves? They can up their game with taking care of themselves too? Can she start an LS, LLC or a company or something to where she implements everything that they do for him so all the Ravens can be taken care of too? I, I hope that they do, really. Because <laughs> a healthy Ravens team, oh boy, like the sky is the limit for a healthy Ravens team. Um, So we'll see what happens. Anyway, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Again, let's watch out to see what's next because like Eric DaCosta pretty much said, when it came to free agency, I think we ain't done yet.